welcome back to my channel. My name is Peyton. I'm super excited about this video. I'm going to be talking about my most anticipated reads of 2024. There's a mix of horror and fantasy, a little bit of sci-fi, some YA. 24 books I'm super looking forward to this coming year and, I'm also wanted to and I also wanted to talk about my 2024 reading goals. In 2023 I had a fantastic reading year. I read 70 books. So I want to read about I'm shooting for about 75 and 25 of those books I want to come from this enormous tome, my 1001 books to read before you die. Um, I think it'll push me to read more out of my comfort zone and read more classics that have been sitting on my shelf for I don't even know how long. And I have a book journal that I'm going to start this year that's going to, I'm treating more as like a junk journal that I'm really, really, really excited about. Also, one of my 2024 reading goals is to read a lot more from my TBR. There are 24 books on this list. That's That being said, I don't know if I will get to all of them. There is a few on here from authors that I genuinely love and want to support their work, but I don't want to break the bank, break my wallet. So I do want to utilize my local library more or borrowing books from friends. But before I start, make sure you have a warm beverage. I have some coffee and some water. Not warm. But I also have a blanket so we get nice and cozy and let's talk about some books. If you see me looking down a lot, it's because all my notes are on my computer. These books are going to be in order of release date and I just want to say these dates are subject to change due to the author or the publisher's discretion, so keep that in mind. What I have on here now is the most up-to-date date. Um, and also, I wanted a blanket statement. 2024 has some gorgeous covers. Oh my god, like some of the most beautiful covers I have ever seen. Starting off in January, we have a horror, we have a horror release. The time of filming, this book comes out next week. It's called This Wretched Valley by Jenny Kiefer. Um, this is a horror story that has to do with it's kind of a retelling of the incident at Dyatlov Pass, which has always interested me. It's a fascinating true crime. I wouldn't say it's true crime. It's a fascinating case. If you haven't heard of it before, you will fall down a million rabbit holes, especially if you go on Reddit, about what actually happened. Anyway, this follows four friends who want to climb this mountain face, I think it's in Kentucky, that hasn't been accomplished before, and one of them is a very well-known Instagram celebrity who climbs and so four of her friends go out to this climb seven months later three mangled bodies are found and Dylan who's the main character in this has not been found. Were the climbers murdered? Did they succumb to cannibalism? <laughs> or are their impossible bodies the work of something even more sinister? And is Dylan still alive? And does she hold the answers? I am such a sucker for this type of horror. Like, how, what would you call it? Woodsy? <laughs> I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like The Descent, but above ground. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> this has also been compared to Yellow Jackets, which is I know is a really beloved show that has to do with a group of um, a group of girls who survive a plane crash in the wilderness. Um, haven't seen it yet, don't come at me. I really want to watch it, but this sounds really awesome. Next is Womb City by Tilo Tilo Tamase. That comes out January 23rd. This is a horror sci-fi dystopia. Womb City imagines a dark and deadly future, Botswana, rich with culture and true folklore, which begs the question, how far must one go to destroy the structures of ine inequity upon which a society was founded? How far must a mother go to save the life of her child? I know this has like kind of a dystopian, this has a dystopian view where men can implant microchips into their wives' bodies, which is <coughs> fucking horrifying, that sentence all on its own. So this follows our main character, Neela. Neela? I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, she has a husband and a child on the way, but the body that she is in con is controlled by a, a micro microchip and it's on the tailspin of a loveless marriage between the two. A drug-fueled night of celebration ends in a hit and run. To dodge a sentencing in the society that favors men, Neela and her side piece, Janice Kolsha, Janice Kolsha, finish the victim off and bury the body. 
but the secret claws its way to Neela's life from the grave. As her victim's vengeful ghost begins exacting a bloody revenge on everyone Neela holds dear, she'll have to unravel her society's terrible secret to stop those in power and become a monster unlike any other to quench the ghost's violet thirst. This is a sick cover. Like, oh, I love that cover. That's one of, like, all, like, you're gonna see so many beautiful covers, but I really, like, it's so unsettling and amazing. Next is one that I heard about a couple months ago, and it really piqued my interest because of my love of horror movies. That is, that is Midnight on Beacon Street by Emily Ruth Verona. This comes out on January 30th. A suspenseful and entertaining debut thriller and love letter to vintage horror movies in which a teenager must overcome her own anxiety to protect the two children she's babysitting when strangers come knocking at the door. I know this is set in the early 90s. It has the babysitter trope of, of course, something goes wrong <laughs> with this somewhat seasoned babysitter watching these kids who and has to protect them. Um, it's a well-known trope in horror. It's one I actually really enjoy, um, like when a stranger calls, Halloween. I'm just gonna read the little clip here. Oh, the main character also has an anxiety disorder. She loves movies, especially horror flicks. Amy likes their predictability. It calms the panic that threatens to overwhelm her. I mean, I get it. That's why I watch horror. <laughs> the dopamine hit that comes with horror. The evening starts out normally enough with games, pizza, and dancing, but the, as darkness falls, events in the quaint suburban New Jersey house take a terrifying turn. Unexpected visitors at the door, mysterious phone calls, and by midnight, little Ben is in the kitchen standing in a pool of blood with a dead body at his feet. Alright. Alright, we're moving on to February. Okay. This is one I'm, I'm so excited about that I think I'm gonna, like, jinx myself. I think I might disappoint myself because of how excited I am about this book. That is The Book of Love by Kelly Link. Kelly Link is an author I do not see enough um, on booktube or book talk. More known in the literary world for her short stories which are incredible, they're quirky, they're weird, they're horrifying. One of my favorite short stories she wrote was about some astronauts in space who uh, pass the time telling each other ghost stories and it's so good. Like Kelly Link is incredible. So of course when I heard about this over 600 page book about these teenagers that come back from the dead to terrorize a small town. I'm all in. This has a lot of different genres tagged onto it on Goodreads. Um, there's fantasy, there's sci-fi, there's thriller, there's horror, so we shall see. The synopsis is really long, so if you do want to look it up, please do. I feel like sometimes these give away a little bit too much, but that's the main thing you need to know. It's about three teenagers who disappeared out of their small town called Love Send in Massachusetts, and they've long been presumed dead and they come back to haunt the town. Um, and yeah, it's, over, it's almost 700 pages, so I think this is gonna be really fun. Like I said, I'm super excited about this one. I really hope I don't ruin it for myself by being so excited. Next up in February is one you've probably heard of nu numerous times on numerous lists. It was announced about midway to earlier in 2023. It's An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This comes out February 13th. It's gay, gothic horror, fantasy, dark academia, a spin on the, uh, a spin on Carmilla, which I have not read. I actually just got it from Libby. I think it predates Dracula by like 20 years. I know it's another vampiric tale. That's something you're gonna see a lot on this list is I think vampire <laughs> vampire books are back in a big way this year and I'm here for it. An Education in Malice is set at a school, a college in Massachusetts. It follows two women who are intense academic rivals vying for the attention of their professor and this becomes it becomes tangled in a sinister game of politics, bloodthirsty professors, and dark magic. Laura and Camilla must decide how much they're willing to sacrifice in their ruthless pursuit of knowledge. I really loved A Dowry of Blood. I read that sometime last year and I was like obsessed with it. There are actually a, quite a few releases that come out on February 13th. Next is What Beasts at Night. This is Sworn Soldier Number 2 by T. Kingfisher. This is the follow-up to What Moves the Dead, which I thoroughly enjoyed. This follows our main character, Alex. Um, they're returning from the events of what happened in the first book, I, I'm pretty sure. 
and they're going to their home country, Galicia, I think that's how you pronounce it. And then when they arrive, things are not what they seem. The town is in disarray, it's quiet. And the villagers whisper that there is a breath-stealing monster from folklore that has taken up residence in their home, in Easton's home. Easton knows better than to put too much stock in local, local superstitions, but they can tell that something is not quite right in their home or in their dreams. This is one I'm really excited about. Um, there are a lot of sequels and continuation of series that come out this year, and I'm glad that I can read one of them <laughs> because I'm not caught off caught up in a lot of them. Next also comes out on February 13th. This is called The Warm Hands of Ghosts by Catherine Arden. This is a fantasy historical fiction. This has a very long synopsis. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, and I'm not sure if it's going to lean more historical fiction or more fantasy. And if that name sounds familiar, Catherine Arden, Catherine Arden wrote um, The Bear and the Nightingale. Ooh. All right, I got a cough drop, so hopefully that'll help. I'm still getting over a cold. It just sucks. Ah, okay. Sorry if you didn't hear my cough drop. I'll read the briefest little bit, but it is a very long synopsis. During the Great War, a combat nurse searches for her brother, believed dead in the trenches despite eerie signs that suggest otherwise, in this hauntingly beautiful historical novel with a speculative twist. So I will leave it at that. Next is one of two YA novels on this list. It is A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This comes out February 20th. This is fantasy YA historical fiction. It's going to be a fantasy duology. King Arthur meets Peaky Blinders with vampires. The novel follows a gang of outcasts in the deadly high slid by Artie Kashmir to save her tea room, which fronts as an illegal bloodhouse where local vampires can purchase fresh blood. It's been a minute since I've gotten into YA, not because my tastes have changed necessarily, but it's just, it is because my tastes have changed. <laughs> this one just sounded way too good to pass up, so I will at least check it out. We are into March now. Next is Thirst, I'm gonna butcher this name, so I apologize. You can kindly, kindly correct me in the comments below. Next is Thirst by Marina, Yuzik, by Marina Yosekuk, I'm so sorry. Translate fiction. This is translated by Heather Cleary. This comes out March 5th. It's a horror, queer, gothic fantasy. Across two different time periods, two women confront fear, loneliness, morality, and a haunting yearning that will not let them rest. A breaking genre blurry novel from one of the most exciting new voices of Latin America, um, of Latin America's feminist gothic. Echoes of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and written, written in the vein of feminist gothic writers like Shirley Jacket, Jackson, Daphne du Maurier, and Carmen Maria Machado. I love that trifecta. That's amazing. Thurs plays with the boundaries of genre while exploring the limits of female agency. Can you hear my dogs? I'm sorry. The consuming power of desire and the fragile vitality of even the most immortal of creatures. Next is Annie Bot by Sierra Greer. This is a sci-fi that comes out on March 19th. It says, for fans of Never Let Me Go and My Dark Vanessa, a powerful, provocative novel about the relationship between a female robot and her human owner, exploring questions of intimacy, power, autonomy, and control. Annie is a robot created to be the perfect girlfriend for her human owner, Doug. Playful and eager to please, she has dinner ready for him every night, wears the outfits he buys for her, and adjusts her libido to suit his whims. Maybe the apartment isn't always spotless, but she's trying to be good enough for Doug. She's trying really hard. Annie grows more self-aware. She begins to shape around the borders of her life. The empty weeks spent confined to the apartment, the fitness regimens designed to keep her part organic body toned, the service appointments to increase her bra size and shave inches off her waist. Worst of all are Doug's unpredictable moods and the way he can punish her without even raising his voice. This sounds a little bit like the movie Ex Machina a little bit. So that's that seems that premise just sounded really interesting. I don't know, this sounds like this might be a like good for her type of book and I'm all for that. <laughs> Next are The Woods All Black by Lee Mandelo. This comes out March 19th. Horror, queer, historical fiction. This is equal parts historical Horror, trans romance, and blood-soaked revenge, all set in 1920s Appalachia. Um, and that 
Yeah, that sold me right there. I don't know how much else I'm gonna read <laughs> because again, it's a pretty lengthy um, synopsis. Come on now, this cover. The setting too, it's just, uh, like, yeah. This is, this is one of the big ones. And the second YA novel on this list, Where Sleeping Girls Lie by, by Farida Abike Iyimide. This comes out on March 19th. This is a YA thriller. It also sounds like a little bit, little bit dark academia, but I could be wrong. Um, this follows school novice Sade, who falls under suspicion when her roommate goes missing on the first night at the, the academy. She um, hasn't had a very great life, and that's, that seems like it follows her into this prestigious Nobel Academy. She's always been homeschooled and has no idea what to expect when she steps through the doors of her imposing new home. But she certainly didn't imagine her roommate Elizabeth going missing on her first night. Or for people to think that she had something to do with it. Instead of blending in, suddenly everyone is talking about her, including the unholy trinity, a group of the most popular girls at school. Left up in their circle, Sade can't shake the sense that there's more to Elizabeth's disappearance especially as no one seems to care about what's happened to her. And then a student is found dead. Yeah, I like the boarding school setting. I like the isolation setting. I like that it kind of could be a Heathers kind of thing too, so I'm here for it. All right, we're into April, and next is a release I don't have a ton of information on. There's really not a lot on it except for like a little bit of a, a little bit of a synopsis. It's All the Friends of Hell by Adam Neville. This is comes out April 2nd. This is a horror post-apocalyptic creature horror. And the only Adam Neville book I've read is the last is Last Days, and I actually really enjoyed it. It actually really freaked me out. And I've seen the movie The Ritual. I've not read the book. I know he's very hit or miss for a lot of people, but the premise sounds really interesting and horrifying. Like I love post-apocalyptic horror, especially when there's like a creature involved, um, and when it's on such a enormous global scale too. The Red Knight of Bells heralds global catastrophe, annihilation on a biblical scale. Seeing the morning is no blessing. A handful of scattered survival survivors are confronted by blood red skies and an infestation of predatory horrors that never originate on Earth. An occupying force intent on erasing the remnants of animal life from the planet. It follows a small group of people hearing that the sea may offer an escape. So that one's I'm very interested in reading. This date I think has changed a few times, so we'll see, but right now it's April 2nd. Next, I'm very excited because if you saw my birthday vlog, you will know that Lee Bardugo is a new favorite author of mine, so this will be a pre-order for sure. A ton of other people's most anticipated reads of this year, The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. This is set to come out April 9th. It has a little bit of a confusing um, synopsis, so I'll just read a little bit. It's supposed to be a historical dark fantasy set during Spain Spain's Golden Age. Uh, a servant girl with magical powers strives to hide her Jewish blood from the deadly gaze of the Inquisition. Louisa Catado uses scrap magic to get through her day of endless toil as a scullion. Her mistress discovers her talents and wants to use them to better her family's social position. Determined to seize the one chance to better her fortune, Louisa plunges into a world of seers and alchemists, holy men and hucksters, where the line between magic, science, and fraud is never certain. But as her notoriety grows, so does the danger that her Jewish blood will doom her for the Inquisition's wrath. She will have to use every bit of her wit and will to survive. It's another adult release from Lee Bardugo. Um, like I said, I absolutely loved Ninth House and Hellbent, so while I'm waiting for another installment of Alex Stern, I'm excited to read this one. Uh, the cover is just gorgeous. Ah, uh, I love that text. Also on April 9th, is Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes. This is another sci-fi horror. I read Dead Silence last year and I loved it. I love a, I love sci-fi horror movies, so I will I will read this. Um, I know a lot of people really didn't like Dead Silence or didn't like the ending. I thought the ending was okay, so I'm hoping that this new release has a more satisfying ending. It's another crew and leader 
that must survive in, on an ancient abandoned planet instead of a ship like on Dead Silence. This is a whole planet, which that's so exciting. Um, this follows a psychologist, Ophelia, who has dedicated her life to the study and prevention of ERS, a space-based condition most famous for the case that resulted in the brutal murders of 29 people. When she's assigned to a small exploration crew, she's very eager to make a difference. But as they begin to establish residency on an abandoned planet, it becomes clear that the crew is hiding something. And while Ophelia focuses on her new job, her crewmates are way more interested in exploring the eerie ancient planet and unraveling the mystery behind the previous colonizer hasty departure. Until the pilot is discovered gruesomely murdered, is Ophelia's worst nightmare starting, a wave of violence and mental d deterioration from ERS, or is it something more sinister? We are going into May, and this is the only, this is the only romance on my list, but I heard the title, and I heard the premise, and I was like, I cannot not pick this up. This sounds delightful. It is The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. This comes out May 14th. It is a queer fantasy romance. More of a cozy fantasy, which I'm all about. And this, this just seems like I'm going to kick my little feet and just feel all the good feels. The Honey Witch of Innisfree can never find true love. That is her curse to bear. But when a young woman who doesn't believe in magic arrives on the, her island, Sparks fly in this deliciously sweet debut novel of magic, hope, and overcoming, and love overcoming all. Mm. It sounds like there's a lot of, like, will they, won't they, and, like, magical baking and cooking, and there's honey, it's a honey witch, and, oh, I just love that. I just think it's gonna be so sweet. I just wanna kick my little feet and go yee-hee a lot. That sounds so cute! Also on May 14th is My Darling Dreadful Thing by Joanna Van Veen. Um, it's a queer gothic horror fantasy. This follows Ruth Speckman. She has a spirit companion only she can see. His name is Ruth. It's a strange corpse-like and she's been dead for centuries. And it's the only good thing in Ruth's life, which is filled with sword backroom seances organized by her mother. That is, until a wealthy young widow, Agnes Knoop, attends one of these seances and asks Ruth to come live with her in her crumbling estate she inherited upon the death of her husband. The manor is unsettling, but the attraction between Ruth and Agnes, Agnes is, palatable. is palatable. So how does someone end up dead? <laughs> um, yeah, this sounds really fun, twisted, and yeah, the cover alone, just like, ooh, this is... This might be, I'm hoping this is really, really dark and twisted. That's what I'm hoping. I don't want to be led astray. Don't let me down, Joanna Van Veen. Next is a book I've seen on quite a few other people's lists. It's also the other, the only mystery and thriller on this list. The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. This comes out May 21st. This premise just sounded really, really cool. He wrote, this is it, I'm gonna... I'm going to butcher the title. Is it The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle? I have it on my shelf. I've not read it. Um, but it's the same author. So it's again another twisty, turny, mind-bending murder mystery. Again, I love post-apocalyptic worlds, like when there's like a small group of survivors and something goes wrong. I'm all in. I'm all in. Solve the murder to save what's left of the world. It's a pretty lengthy, um, premise, so I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit. This killer flog, flog, oh my god, this killer fog swept the planet killing anyone who touched it. So this island is kept pristine and there's 120 villagers, three scientists living in peaceful harmony. The villagers are content to fish, farm, and feast and obey the nightly curfew and do what they're told by the scientists until there's a murder, and they learn the murder has triggered a, lower, a lowering of the security system around the island, the only thing that's keeping the fog at bay. If the murder isn't solved within 92 hours, the fog will smother the island and everyone on it. So there's a countdown, there's a small group of survivors, there's a kind of hierarchy on this island with the scientists, so I feel like this is going to be a little twisty turny, like secrets come to the surface and not everything is like it seems, and... <laughs> Next is the only short story collection on his on this list by the king himself, Stephen King. You like it darker. This comes out May 21st. This is a new collection of 12 short stories that have never been released. 
and it's supposed to be some of his best work ever. I have a goal this year to read a King book every month. I'm trying to make it through his entire works and the man is still churning out works. So when I'm going to finish this, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've read a lot of his well-known books, but I'm, I'm pretty behind in a, on a lot of his newer releases of the last probably 15 years. Collection of 12 stories. There's supposedly a sequel to Cujo, which I haven't read, but I have seen the movie. So I'm very curious about that one. Sounds like super fun and I loved I love Night Shift. That's one of probably my favorite short story collections of all time. So I'm really anticipating this to be just as great or better. We are into June now and we have another horror release. Um, this is called The Eyes Are the Best Part by Monica Kim. This cover is amazing. I don't think this is going to be the American release. Um, which will be a big bummer because the other one is it's okay but I like this one so much better. Crying in H Mart meets my sister the serial killer in this feminist psychological horror that about the making of a female serial killer from a Korean American perspective. It follows Ji Wan, her life is in tumbles in the wake of her appa's extramarital affair and subsequent departure. Her mother's distraught, her younger sister hurt and confused, her college freshman grades failing, her dreams horrifying yet enticing. In these dreams, she is in a bloody room full of eyes, succulent blue eyes, salivatingly blue eyes. Even the same shape and shade as George, who is Oma's obnoxious new boyfriend. George has already overstayed his welcome in her family's claustrophobic apartment. He brags about his pulled, puffed up consulting job, ogles Asian waitresses while dining out, and acts condescending toward Ji Wan and her sister, as if he deserve as if he deserves all of Emma's fawning adoration. No, George doesn't deserve anything from her family. Ji Wan will make sure of that. And I think this is going to be a very. It just seems like it'll be a good for her like twisted scenario, and I love that. I love it. I want to read it now. Next, we are into July. On July sixteenth, we have I Was a Teenage Slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. So a horror release, a classic slasher story with a twist set in 1989 in La Mesa, Texas. It's a small West Texas town driven by oil and cotton in a place where everyone knows everyone else's business. So it goes for Tolly Driver, a good kid with more potential than application. 17 and about to be cursed to kill for revenge. Here Stephen Graham Jones explores the Texas he grew up in, the unfairness of being on the outside, through the slasher horror he lives but from the perspective of the killer, Tolly writing his own autobiography. Find yourself rooting for the killer in the summer teen movie of a novel gone full blood curdling tragic. <laughs> I've not read Stephen Graham Jones. I know he has another release uh, at least coming out this year that is the end of his trilogy and I'm blanking on the title of the trilogy right now but I haven't read it so it's not included on this list but this standalone sound but this standalone sounds really great. Next in August, the only release I have for August on here is Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. This is slated to come out August 6th. This is a historical fantasy retelling of Macbeth, um, which is my favorite Shakespeare tragedy. So, and I just read uh, Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed and I absolutely loved it. I'm still thinking about it. I have such a book, book hangover from that book. There's more from Lady Macbeth's perspective. And this cover is gorgeous. I love that it's from her perspective because I think she's such an interesting, tragic, complicated character and I would love to- and I'm so excited to read it from Ava Reed's beautiful, beautiful writing. The lady knows the stories, how her eyes induce madness in men. The lady knows she will be wed to a Scottish brute who does not leave his warrior ways behind when he comes to the marriage bed. The lady knows his hostile, suspicious court will be a game of strategy requiring all of her wiles and hidden witchcraft to survive. But the lady does not know her husband has occult secrets of his own. Prophecy girds him. Girds him? Girds him? I think it's supposed to be gone. Sorry, spell check. The prophecy guards him like armor. She does not know that her magic is greater and more dangerous and that it will threaten the order of the world. She does not know this yet, but she will. All right, we are into October and the final two books of this list. Um, on October 10th, we'll have Moon of the Turning Leaves by Wabkashing Rice. This is a follow-up to 
his book Moon of the Crescent Snow which I read last year which is a post-apocalyptic horror. And that story has to do with a small Anishinaabe community in Canada who are very isolated and when the world goes dark, like no cell communication, no power, nothing, the first, that book is basically how they're surviving when strangers start to show up in their community. And I thought that book ended on such like a like a firm like hard like hit you in the face cliffhanger so I'm really excited to pick this one up and follow the same group of characters there because I really I thought the writing was really beautiful I thought it was really atmospheric oh, so anxiety inducing in a few parts like there was one part that I called Luke because I was just like what where are you I need you like to think like that feeling of not having a way to connect with those you love and be so isolated is ah yeah I'm excited to pick this back up lastly um, I don't have a ton of information for this. There is a very small blurb. I think this was recently just released is Rest Stop by Nat Cassidy. This is a horror novella and reading Mary and Nestlings, I will read absolutely anything by him now. Like I will read a grocery list by him. Um, but this is a horror novella. A young musician finds himself locked inside a gas station bathroom in the middle of the night by an unseen assailant caught between the horrors on the other side of the door and the horrors rapidly skittering down the walls inside. Yeah, I loved Mary. I love Nestling, so I will definitely pick this up. I hope this date does not change. It is slated to come out October 15th. Should have said that. It is slated to come out October 15th. Um, but that is it. That is my entire list. That is 24 books I'm super excited to read this year or hope that I can get to this year. But there they all are. Yes, aren't they beautiful? Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I have a bunch of cool videos planned and I'd love for you to be there to watch and I will have some new videos for you soon. Bye!